So uh, assume I've made an OTA, Operational Transconductance Amplifier, in Xscheme. And I'm trying to figure out how well does it work. I make my loop stability test bench and I run ng-spice. So I have a few scripts that around uh, ng-spice here. Um, but that's not the important part. The important part is looking at the face margin and the loop gain and saying, well, that's not entirely what I expected. I mean, here we're operating in 130 nanometer technology. I guess the intrinsic gain of the transistor. Actually, let's figure that out. So here I'm using a standard library of transistors. I'll post these links in the description below. And right for my input pair, for example, I'm using a 4C1F2, 4C1F2, and the intrinsic gain of that transistor, biased at a few microamps. Let's see, is that... So I have two microamps bias current going in that... Um, yeah, so it's deep into the sub-threshold. So with a GMID of 15. There I have an intrinsic gain of almost 80 dB. Now, of course, the gain of our op-amp here is given by the transconductance of the input pair times the output impedance of the output here, uh, which is a CAS code. So I would actually expect quite high gain, but I'm not getting that. And then the sort of suspicion goes towards, well... <laughs> There's probably a problem with my uh, headroom or some of the transistors are not operating in the right operating region. Now, I could go into any spice, I could plot every single node, but here a wonderful thing has happened in next game. And let me show you. So, I, I like to do most of my simulation from the um, terminal, but particularly for this... Um, finding out the operating point, it's quite useful to use a test bench in x -game. So Let's toggle the color scheme. Let's see, there we go. So it's a bit easier to see. So here I've made a test bench for my op-amp. This is my op-amp. It has, well, two inputs, two outputs, and a few, um, well, like VDD and a bias current of one microamp. Actually, I think I'm using two microamps in the design. Let's fix that. And grounds, and this is the uh, loop for the common mode to be able to break that loop. Now, in the X scheme, I've also put in an NG Spice uh, netlist type of thing. So this is this is what um, X scheme will netlist, and it includes a corner spy. So I've also enabled the option called Use Simulation Deer and Schematic Deer. So if we go to that directory, work, you'll see a simulation there, and in there I have a corner spy. And this is sort of my setup for um, that corner. Now, for that little test bench, all I'm really doing is running an operational trans uh, <laughs> an op point using a transient and writing in the raw file. I'm saving everything and also saving the currents. In addition, I'm running a typical corner, but here I've also made a slow corner, so I could include that if I wanted to. Actually, let's do that. So let's do slow so. Okay. So you need to set that up, and when you then press netlist and simulate, it will run ng-spice. And if everything works now, yeah, here we go. Let's just uh, dismiss that. We can go to graphs, and we can annotate operating point into schematic. Select the raw file, and then, voila, we have the voltages. And then we can navigate into our design, 
And now what I'm looking for is, is there any point in the circuit that where the voltages are not what they're supposed to be? Now, I have artifi uh, artificially made the operating point wrong, but let's have a look at the op-amp. So we start with the tail current source. We see we have 150 millivolt across the drain source of the tail current source. That's probably okay. For the cascodes, a few hundred millivolts, that's probably okay. We're operating quite deep into a, uh, well, moderate to weak inversion for most of the transistors here. But then we can see up here for the PMOS cascode, we're at 1.64 and the VDD is at 1.7, which means that we only have 50 millivolts across the PMOSs, the current married PMOSs at the top here. And that's probably not enough. So by very quickly looking at the schematic, we can sort of figure out where we have a problem and in this case, we can change the CAS code BIOS transistor. Uh, let's go 4. And then we can rerun. Actually, let's go up to here. Netlist, simulate. Uh, I'm not sure it updates the um, annotations automatically. I don't think it does. There we go. Let's update that. Go in. Now we're at 1.5, that means we have 120 millivolts. Mm, maybe that's okay, but let's do a little bit more. Maybe 8C. Netlist, simulate. And load. And let's see where we are now. Oh, I was too quick. Let's go back. Annotate, go ahead, and let's see. Okay, now we have about 170 millivolts. That should be enough. And now I can go back to my terminal, and I can run, for example, let's run typical again. We used to have 48 dB low frequency gain. Let's see what we get now. Running, running, running. Okay, now we're up in 70. The face margin looks good. And then we can lo run the slow corner. So this will run slow corner at both high and low temperatures, since we actually don't know which one is gonna be the slow corner. And let's just confirm. Let's see, oh, that probably passes by too quickly, but 69 dB. We'll get a summary at the end. There we go. 66 dB, still the phase margin looks good. Excellent, and we fixed our problem. So back annotation into schematics, particularly for operating point, really useful feature in X-Scheme. So all these uh, designs are freely available online. I will post the links in the description below. I would recommend that you check out the design in ASEX because in ASEX here, let me show my folder structure. Okay, so I have this project I call ASEX, which is a collection of IPs. And in there, I also have the OTA. And all that's set up via a YAML file. That's not the important part. I'll post the links in the description below. Uh, for ASEX and also for the uh, op-amp. So a big shout out to <laughs> Stefan for making the back annotation. Fantastically useful for uh, actually figuring out what's wrong with our analog designs. And uh, yeah, great job. Have a fantastic day.